When Republican Pat McGrory won the North Carolina governor's race in November, he declared, quote, the curse is over. What was he talking about? Well, McGrory broke the Democrats' 20-year hold on the Tar Heel state's highest office, becoming only the third Republican governor in North Carolina since 1901. It's also the only gubernatorial seat that flipped from Democrat to Republican in the past election. McCrory's win brought the total number of Republican governors to 30. It's actually the highest number for either party in 12 years. <clears throat> Many of those governors went to town this weekend for the nation's Governors Association meeting. It's their winter meeting, including the new governor from North Carolina, Pat McCrory, who joins me now. Governor, good morning. Great being here, Chuck. Uh, Thanks for having thanks me. The curse was also, I was Mayor of Charlotte. I was just going to say, and that's a, no Charlotte mayor had ever been governor, that's is correct. that right? That's correct. So uh, that was... This is actually, that mayor phenomenon is yeah. an issue that happened, uh, Ed Rendell had to break that curse right. in Pennsylvania. That's right. I think people in rural parts of states, they don't trust those big city guys. Well, we got out in the rural areas <laughs> and gained their trust, and we've got a great relationship. Let's talk first sequestration. A lot of people in Washington, when they think North Carolina, um, other than the beautiful Outer Banks, they also think there's a lot of military bases uh, yeah. bases there. Have you done your own analysis? What kind of impact is it going to have? We don't know. Uh, we have five major military bases in North Carolina. Of course, we're greatly concerned because the basic budget is allows only non-personnel operating cuts, which is really going to hit the civilians mm -hmm. in and around Fayetteville, in and around Jacksonville, North Carolina, and, and other cities in North Carolina where we have our bases. And we don't know what the real impact is going to be right now. In fact, that's one of the issues I hope to talk uh, with people at the White House about and at the Pentagon while I'm here this week. But uh, we're greatly concerned. It's, it's not the way to do budgeting. And, you know, I've been locked up in a room as governor for the past uh, uh, several weeks in a room, right. no curtains, just I mean, with curtains, just doing work, and I, I, that's what I want the president and Congress to do. You were also saying to me, though, before we were talking, that one of the things you did on your budget is, you know, you had to raise some business taxes. You didn't like it, but you, you had, you had to do it. What do you tell your Republican friends in the House? You know, you think that's where they should, if the president is insisting on some tax right. hikes, uh, should they? Look at those loopholes. I think they just did raise some taxes last year. On the income in tax. Last they, right. Well, I'm closing some loopholes right now and in some income tax reform, but the fact of the matter is we need to reform the way we spend money in government. And there is so much waste right now. And right now, for example, in our medic, we just found over $2 billion of wasted money and bad administration during the past two to three years. So we've got to look at how to spend the money more effectively. But I, I owed the federal government $2.6 billion dollars for unemployment compensation. I owe the federal government that money. So I cut some of the benefits and also raised some of the uh fees on businesses because they were only paying off the interest. I believe government, whether at the city, state, or federal level, has to pay off the credit card. Because one thing I learned in my own family, if the credit card keeps compounding, right. you're just you're, digging you're yourself more and more, more, more and more in debt. Let me ask you about Medicaid. Uh, obviously, the president's health care law, a big part of it has to do with there's two aspects that that they need state cooperation for. Yeah. One is the idea of expanding Medicaid, and one is the idea of setting up these health care, uh, health insurance exchanges. Uh, you have said you don't want to do either. Explain why. Well, I had five weeks to make that decision. I just got sworn in, so it was very a short time. Uh, several reasons. One is our current Medicaid system in North Carolina is broken. The system of delivery, our administrative costs are 30 percent higher than many, many states throughout the United States. Why is your administrative cost higher there than another? We're trying state? to figure it out. Okay. Uh, a lot of it's bureaucracy. A lot of it's broken information systems. Some of it's fraud and abuse, and we've got to. We've got to cut down on that. So before I expand a system, I've got to fix the current system. So it sounds like, the, does that mean if you, once you feel like you've fixed your system, then you would be open to expanding? Based upon two other factors. Also, the federal government has to give more flexibility to the states mm -hmm. regarding flexibility on how we give Medicare. And also, is there any responsibility on those receiving, Medicaid, the way, I mean, sorry, yeah. Medicaid, is there any, is there any responsibility of those, for example, on co-payments, mm -hmm. any type of co-payments so there's not an abuse. And right now the states aren't being given that flexibility on Medicaid. Let me ask you on the health care exchanges. So the state says no mm -hmm. to saying they don't want to set it up. It does mean you're basically saying I'm going to let the federal government tell us what to do on these exchanges. So why That's not right. take control? I mean that is sort of the 
you know, that's always the push-pull here, and, 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 and are a lot of Republicans who say, no, 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 the states know better. Don't you think eventually no, you're going to want to take over these exchanges? We may want to take it over, but right now we don't know the real cost of it, and we don't even know the rules, and the rules are kind of being made up and interpreted as we speak. Do you want the federal government to essentially I want to know what the mistakes. rules are and what the real costs are before I devote a huge new bureaucracy, which I would have to build within state government to set up a state exchange. So we're still trying to get clarity on what the real rules are, what the real administrative cost will be, and uh, then we'll take that into consideration. One quick final thing. I had you on day after the election. You were yeah. basically, arguably, maybe the only bright spot for the Republican Party. <laughs> and you said one reason you were proud of your campaign, you didn't go negative or you felt like you had a different tone. Do you think there's a tone problem in the Republican Party? Yeah, I think sometimes we come across as too negative. I think that sometimes we come across as too strident. By the way, the Democrats at times have gone through periods like this. We need to be problem solvers. We need to be likable. And we need to have a vision. But is and it, that's what's what the bigger problem? Hour message and or tone? I think it's a combination of both, but it doesn't mean we change our philosophy. I didn't change my philosophy in winning this election by over 11 points, but I did make sure we had a tone that appeals not just Republicans, but also to Democrats and independents. And uh, people are looking for leadership. They're looking for problem solvers. They're looking for ha hard workers. They're not looking for whiners okay. on either side. I got to leave it there. We don't like whiners here either. <laughs> Tim Russert always had a great, great little thing. So no whiners. <laughs> no whiners. Uh, no whiners no. coming into here. And we need either. hard work. Anyway. I mean, we need to work. Both and I asked the president and the Congress get to work in Washington. I'm Pat McCrory, new Republican governor of North Carolina. Thanks for coming in. Thank you a lot. Uh, enjoy your weekend here in Washington and yeah. uh, the big dinner at the White House Sunday night. Looking forward to All it. All right. Program